and here's a GH5 here at CES 2017. So this is the big launch event right here. Yes. So uh, um, how's it been? Uh, very successful, actually. I think we've won eight or nine awards for the camera at the show thus far. So yeah, people are really receiving it well. And uh, you put a whole bunch of them right here. There's one, two, uh, three, four, five, and a couple over there. So people are actually uh, putting their hands on them, trying them off. Yeah that's, out. yeah, that's correct. You can either hold them and try them out by hand. And then we have them set up in kind of different scenarios. A few of them are here just to shoot just general photography. And then three of them are set up, one of them for anamorphic, to show off anamorphic, one of them to show off HDR, and the, the, this one that's here we're, we're using for high frame rate or 180 frame per second. So right here is a 12 to 60? That's what that is, yes. Uh, is that the kit one? Um, it's the Leica one. The Leica? So, yeah, it's f it's f2.8 at the wide angle, and it's f4 at the telephoto end, and it's our Leica lens. So. Um, uh, GS3 had a nice kit lens, the high-end kit lens. It was a uh, 1235, right? Or was it the? Uh... That's region dependent. In the United yeah. States, we never sold that as a as a kit. Um, it was always body only for the GH3 here. And uh, so, it, what's going to be? The, what do you how, would you recommend the new kit lens, the the newer the newer Leica lens? What what is going to bring out to to use that lens? Right. So the Leica lens, I'm I'm. We're kind of interested to see what the market thinks because we've relaunched the 12 to 35 f2.8 constant um, with a new aperture system, so it will handle zooming better, and you won't see this dither in the zoom as you're working with video. Um, this has the same aperture system, but it's not a constant aperture. Uh, we don't really know exact, or at least I don't really know exactly where the market's going to go. I think a certain percentage of people will really appreciate having a longer telephoto lens to be able to go out to the equivalent of 120 millimeter. I think some folks would rather have a constant f2.8 aperture. You know, the reality is is that the high ISO shooting is so much better on the G um, H5 that I can shoot this lens at f4 constant and be perfectly happy with it. So for me personally, I'm a big fan of this new 12 to 60. This is a $900 lens. Uh, I think it's 999. So 999. Uh, so if I'm like a handheld uh, video blogger kind of guy that walks around and that wants to use the IBIS, that wants to autofocus nicely and focus on you, focus on the product and stuff, which yes. lens you recommend? Well, the new 12 to 35 that we're going to be... Are you showing it somewhere? Here? Yeah, we're showing it in the, in the booth. It's, get, it's getting refreshed, and when we refresh that lens, it will also be able to do the dual IS system. This lens also does dual IS as well. So it's ultimately just going to come down to, do I want a longer telephoto lens, or do I want a brighter, le uh, a, a constant aperture lens? But the first uh, 1235 that you had gets the dual IS firmware upgrade, right? But not dual IS version 2, which is what this one has. So it can't do the version 2? Correct. All right. So, uh, and, and, uh, and then you have over here, you have, what are you showing case on that one? This okay. is our XLR audio adapter, so it allows you to take channel one and channel two audio into the camera. Um, this device here will translate the microphone input. It, it encodes it digitally. It can actually do up to 96 kilohertz, 24-bit audio. And then it injects the audio signal through the hot shoe and puts it right into the video signal. So people who are out there who use like a Zoom HD microphone system uh, and then have to sync it in post, uh, I think a lot of them will find this to be a useful accessory. Uh, it's just something for And uh, so this is higher res audio. Yeah, the, the GH4 was only capable of 4824 um, through the UIA GH unit. Uh, so you have two uh, uh, XLR, and if you use a, a camera like a mic like mine, and which is mini jack, you can just have an adapter, I guess. Yeah, well, no, you don't need an adapter. There's a mic, there's a standard microphone jack on the side of the camera, and then your headphone jack is here as well. So we haven't removed those from the. GH. Can you actually have three mics? You can no, have one mini jack and two XLR. You have to pick, you have to pick right? Yes. But uh, if I want to use this setup with dual mic, with my mini jack, I'd have to use an adapter, right? Yeah. Or get uh, some, some XLR stuff. The XLR mics are better. Is that the XLR? Why XLR is like higher class, right, than mini jack? Yeah, XLR has three pin connections. So what you have is you have one pin connection, one pin connection that's out of phase. And what happens is that the camera cancels out any noise when it puts the signal back in phase. So you get, also you get twice the input voltage, so it naturally just gives you better sound. This demo is for stereo? Yes, this is a stereo rather than a stereo set of Sennheiser microphones. And, uh, but you could have, let's say, uh, two uh, wireless uh, microphone yeah, systems? Yeah, that's, that's the point. You could have, most likely what you would use this for would be channel one on a lav, channel two on a lav, or channel one lav, channel two on a stick, you know, however you wanted to do your recording. And totally control everything right here. 
That's correct. And it has phantom power, so it'll power the microphones as well. And uh, what's your partnership with uh, those uh, recorders there? Are you very happy that, uh, to work with them? So we've, we have strong relationships with Atomos. We have strong relationships with audio devices and video devices. That's the same company. And then we also have a really tight relationship with Convergent Designs. Uh, we're pretty agnostic on the monitor recorder front. Uh, right now in the booth, we're showing the Atomos uh, Inferno because it has the ability to accept uh, 4K60 at 10-bit 422. Um, none of the other recorders we could find were able to do that, so we brought that one in the booth. And we're also showing off the uh, Pix E5 from Video Devices. The Pix E5 is good for anamorphic because it will de-squeeze the anamorphic image. And then if I need to send that image out to another larger monitor, um, that monitor can do that. So that's why we have it here in the booth. The de-squeezing anamorphic is not going to be in camera? With, uh, uh, that's undecided. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, anamorphic lens means uh, you can... Uh, you can make it work in 6K, potentially video. OK, so just so everybody understands, anamorphic is going to, the, what's anamorphic is a lens. A lens is what it creates an anamorphic image. It squeezes the information and stretches it so that things look tall and skinny when it enters the, the lens. Um, our anamorphic mode records in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which was the native aspect ratio for anamorphic movie production. It's what the Arri Alexa XT does for its production. Um, so the question that you're asking is what resolutions it does. Natively, it'll do 3328 by 2496 when it first ships. And that's a 4K anamorphic mode. We'll do a firmware update that's going to be close to about 5,000 pixels wide by about 4,000 pixels tall. So it's the, roughly the... I've done some research. I can't find an anamorphic camera that does a resolution that high other than perhaps the red weapon. I could be wrong, some people might point out the Red Epic Dragon can do it, but this is one of the highest resolution anamorphic cameras on the market. It's also important to note that the sensor is, we're using the entire height and width of the sensor. So there are some cameras that can do anamorphic, like the Reds and like some of the Sony product, but what they have to do is they use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio sensor, and they have to crop that sensor in for anamorphic into a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Well, that means that my sensor is about the same height as a Super 35 for anamorphic. So it's technically larger than an F55 for anamorphic. Um, that means you're getting a very good quality, high resolution sensor that can produce a very similar depth of field to what people are producing in Hollywood today. How much is an F55? Is it uh, one of the 30,000? They're, the, they're, they're well over thirty to 40,000 Thirty, forty thousand dollar camera, right. you do more than them. And the sensor is larger and it's higher resolution. That doesn't mean I'm saying it's better than an F55. There are many things that camera does that our camera cannot. But in terms of the anamorphic look, our, our system is a little more complete than theirs. For so basically, with a GH5, It'll be possible to record 5,000 by 4,000 video. Not 5,000 by 4,000, roughly 5,000 by 4,000. Roughly. It hasn't, yeah. been, it hasn't yeah. been officially released yet. Some so. kind of 6K yeah. resolution. Right, until I see it. And, and it's actually video, up, 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 and as long as you want, the clip can be? Yeah, there should not be any limitations to record. 400 megabit? No, it won't be 400 megabit. No, it'll, it'll be, be an H.265. H.265, that's actually some kind of some kind of 6K video, as and it's basically possible. To record and you can record a whole movie in that way. That would be uh, kind of like uh, future proof or 8K, kind of what you would record with this, right? Well, it's not Is 6K that? the way that people are thinking. 6K for video would be about 5760 wide, and then it would be what 21. So you're at 2160 tall plus. So you're about you're a little more 3,000 pixels tall. We're not in that aspect ratio, we're in a four by three aspect ratio. So we have the same density, we have the same density as 6K, meaning the pixel count is 18 megapixel. But it's not a 6K image, it's important. That's why we call yeah. it high res anamorphic. But it's mind blowing, no? What, what these little cameras can do? I mean, there's so many, so many pixels per second. I mean, not just by frame, per second. Yes. And all this data, it's, uh, it's amazing technology. With, with the, uh, this, this is very high-end technology that you do in Panasonic. This has got to be a fun company to work at, right? Yes, we, we, we certainly have a lot of fun working on the cameras. Realistically, we just listen to the customers, and if, as, if a feature makes sense and we're able to implement it, we put the feature into the camera. So, um, 
Uh, uh, this, have you been uh, uh, reading all the all the hands-on, uh, watching all the videos? Where uh, the media is saying basically that it's the best camera in the world, no? What are the, what are they saying? Best value? Yeah, I don't know about best camera in the world. There are a lot of very good cameras. I mean, the very cam 35 down there is, or the very cam LT is probably a little bit better. Camera. No, the best camera for two thousand dollars for sure. Yeah, I think at its price point, it offers a lot of value for the money. There's no question about that. Cool. So, uh, looking forward to uh, a lot of content being made with this. Uh, in the next couple of months, like March or April, right? Yeah, we're hopefully gonna. Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain it'll ship by the end of March. And people who pre-order, they have a better chance to get it at launch, or? I would assume so. So it's gonna be sold out. Uh, we'll initially, see. yeah, I would assume so. Yeah.